All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the July 6th Youth Condo Youth Board meeting. All right, I'd like to welcome everybody to the July 6th Youth Condo Youth Board meeting. So we'll start off with uh, introductions. And we have a new board member joining us. We're going to give you that. Uh, Here's a three version for you. I'm Larry Knox, uh, chair of the East County Board and also has a Northeast Council seat. Good evening, everyone. Arlene Brown, I'm vice chair, and thank you all so much for taking the time to be with us this evening. We are here to serve the community. You are the most important thing. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bill Reverend Keith Patterson. I'm the director of St. Luke, the St. Simon Society of the School Church, and I'm an aligned seat member. Well, good evening. I'm Ellery Von Wilson, and I'm a council seat member holder, and I'm glad to be here. And I believe that everything should be equal and just. Anyway, I'm back. I'm a member of the board member. Very nice to meet you with all of you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Rabbi Dora Snell, and I represent the Northwest Council seat. Good evening. I'm William Clark, and I'm the mayor's party. Sherry Walker Clark, interim executive director. And I just want to point out sitting in the back is our new newest hire, Dolores Page, who's the director of case management. Thank you, everybody, for joining us in person and online. And definitely a welcome to our newest board member, Ms. Wilson. Thank you for joining us. Uh, she just got voted on a couple weeks ago and already has made it to our first meeting and did a visit to the office also uh, last week. All right, so uh, first matter of business is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting. They were emailed out and also are in front of us right now. Are there any uh, additions, detractions, edits to the meeting minutes? Chair, and no one speaks up about an additional correction because they have an opportunity to read these and read this. I propose that these minutes be accepted as All in favor of moving, yes. uh, second? Second. Mayor Wilson, all in favor? Aye. Right. These will be posted online uh, shortly. Into the July 6th uh, minutes, I was the August 30th, I said July 6th meeting. So we can get All right, um, our first order of business uh, is staff report. Uh, we have uh, quite a bit of information tonight, and um, so it'll be in the minutes. And some of you may want to take notes, um, take notes on if you want to participate in anything. But first of all, can our uh, hires, new hires, we're excited about that. Um, Mr. Lois joining us. Um, we have the director of investigations who will be starting as an attorney who will be starting on um, the 28th of August. We have a uh, staff attorney who will be starting the Monday. Oh, no, no. So she'll be starting with us. The director of investigations will start the 31st. Senior attorney starts the 28th. And we have case managers that will be starting also by the end of August. So we are incredibly excited about that. A lot of work went into uh, interviews. Um, and so we've identified four uh, investigators who will be starting. And uh, the other thing is already this the lease that we're in now ends next spring. So we're already starting the process of trying to identify locations, and, and perhaps including this one, but we, um, we'll be looking at a lot of different locations working with the uh, real estate department for the city. Um, public affairs is extremely busy, and uh, you have in front of you the um, right to know proposal 
there are a number of community input sessions going on with regard to that. Um, uh, the Urban League is on the 8th of, of August. The Rochester Rural Anti Poverty Initiative is going to have their session on the 14th. Um, the PAB Alliance will be, um, that is to be a permanent date. The Democratic Socialists of America will be another place. Center for Youth, there was a community input session today with the youth at the Center for Youth, and I heard that went extremely well. Tonight, there's another um, public session with um, United Church Ministries. That's this evening, um, the 16th, Father Tracy Advocacy Center. There will be a public input, input session there for a uh, Latino Focus public session. There will be a session with the Public Defender's Office, day to be determined um, for there, the radio interview, and that would be determined as well. Um, so there's a lot of community input, and I'm sure the board will have some input on the right to know proposal, which is just getting a lot of good feedback and information. Um, so there's also a lot of community outreach events. Sir, can you give a little background on just what the proposal, the general proposal is about? So the right to know, and just by way of reminder, is a proposal so that if you're stopped by the police, what rights individuals will have. Um, is if they have the right to know whether just what to say, what not to say, if they volunteer, if they don't volunteer, there's different aspects of um, what could be expected of police officers, what we can ask of police officers, and what they can ask of, of individuals. So you're right to know that. If the public either wants to see the draft or know the dates of these additional community input meetings, where would they find that information? Um, I don't know if the address is on the website or not, but um, I will check to see if these dates will be on the website or not. And um, we'll have to check into that because it's going to be a new website lost. So I'll have to, I don't want to say one way or the other, but I will find out. Um, other community outreach events, the Rock the Block, the Rock the Block is uh, ongoing August 9th. Um, community outreach sessions, again, not necessarily on the right to know, but just information about uh, the PAB, um, September 6th, September 20th, and September 27th will be right out here at Parcel 5. We have a lot of festivals coming up, as we know, the Puerto Rican Festival is this weekend, so we'll have some staff there doing community outreach, and then the Kikara Fest will be next weekend, um, and have staff doing some outreach there as well, and information shared. Uh, in addition, we expect the KB's inaugural quarterly newsletter to be launched by the end of this week, by tomorrow. That should be um, exciting. That will be on the website. And the new website should also be launched this month. So we'll make sure we have information on what there. And what's not on there, we'll follow up on that. Um, and the outreach events should be posted on there as well. Um, so I think that's it for that, for public affairs and community outreach. Policy and oversight, as you know, is the right to know. That's the, been the focus on that. Um, and so a lot of public input sessions, the public input phase will go, will go until August 17th. Um, also cataloging any evidence that we're finding in the juvenile pepper spray and the bean bag on oversight investigations. We're trying to get information, uh, request information through our source of information, request the police department. So we're, um, there's work still on trying to get some of that information turned over to us so we can do the, invest the, the research that we want to do. And um, a draft of the annual report is uh, is being concluded. So once that's out, everyone will get a copy of that as well, and that will be posted. Um, now, in addition to Dolores um, being the director of, of case management, uh, Ian Benz has been promoted to senior case manager uh, in the case management unit. So we're excited about that as well. And we're still working on getting the download access. There's, there's work being done and different computers being purchased. And so it hasn't completely happened yet, but um, we're looking forward to get that. So the analysis that we need to do uh, can be done. I also know that you, you looked for the case um, status updates. 
Right now, the site that that's on is having some glitches, and so we're not able to give those numbers. It's, it's, it's only the month of July, so um, that should be worked out with um, the, the, the folks behind the scenes who do that kind of work. So we are working on that. And you also have a copy of the 29th Annual NACO Conference schedule. Um, there will be, a, I think, a couple of board members going and a few staff members going. Uh, and so if that's something you're interested in, I don't know how you all want to figure out who's going, but that's up to you. But there's a schedule and then you can all go if you want to go in your home. So uh, we haven't for a while. We have room for six staff, right? Five, five, five staff, five staff three and three board. Uh, that's my report. Yeah. Thank you so much, here. Thank you so much, Sherry. I would like to emphasize to the community, I have been approached by a number of community members who said we don't have enough Hispanic representation. And we're encouraging everybody that in the community, if you're interested in sitting on the board, please submit an application, go to your council person, or go to the website. We need to hear from you. We've we'll only sit here three years at a time. So there is constant turnover, but we need the community to step forward. This is an awesome opportunity to have an impact, make a difference, because we're totally, totally about reimagining safety in Rochester for everybody. Any other questions for Ms. Walker? I just uh, the things that um, you spoke about are they going to be on our next um, meetings papers in, in the minutes? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, on to the chair's report then. We'll say that uh, all of Ms. Clinton Brown knows that there is one open seat that we have. I've got to add uh, Mr. Cadet trying to make it today. He did let us know how he was going to be able to make the board meetings today. But we are at, at eight board members, which has been a while since we've had that many. Uh, there is one opening um, the East Council District seat, the Glidden East District of the, of, of the City of Rochester. Uh, you have opportunity, and I believe the application process is still open to let City Council know. The interest in serving, um, and you know, we need all kinds of representation on the board, but it's, it's very important that we get that seat filled. And uh, as that application process is still open for the East uh, District seat, and we just finally just uh, build our South seat. And I do want to give um, Ms. Wilson just a couple minutes if you want to talk a bit about yourself and you know, join the PAB as part of my charity report or 30 seconds. You know, let's take a little two minutes. You want to give the opportunity. Okay. <laughs> Well, like I said earlier, my name is uh, Yvonne Wilson. I am an elder. Um, I do ministry. For about 20 years, I did um, the other prison ministry. I also, um, like I said, I believe in the scales being balanced. So I'm not, uh, I want to say it was a bias or partial to any side, whether it's, you know, the police department or someone on the street that has a complaint. I believe that everybody has a right to be heard and a right to give their side and then you make a decision. I guess what I'm trying to say, I don't believe in racism in any shape, form, or fashion. Okay. And um, it's a privilege to be part of the board. I kind of, years ago, started out a little bit following the PAB board. Um, I didn't stick with it because it was in the, what you call it, the early stages. They were trying to basically get what they wanted. But I did, I'm all for police accountability. And I do would, would like that it would be, I want to say, um, 
not armed forces, but sheriff department, anybody who's dealing with uh, policing people, I hope that some kind of way we get some legislation, okay, to put that all in on this also because sometimes the police and the sheriff department and people from other places all be at the same place. So it's not always the police department who is policing the people. They're, you know, they they do it together. And I think that those people also, if they do something wrong, should be held accountable also. So I want to say this, I do believe I'm a Christ follower. Okay. And I just want people to know that. So I stand, I think uh, the Bible stands for justice for everybody. Okay. So that's what I believe. Thank you. Thank you, it's awesome. And uh, again, East District seat is open. So if you're interested, please make application or if you know somebody in the community that's interested. Uh, for the chair's part, I, I do want to say that I'm really glad that we have these new positions starting. Um, our staff has been very clear on the work that needs to be done and the fact that they had um, a lot more work than people to do the work. Um, and that's not what the community needs. That's, that's you know, in, in all parts of, uh, Accountability, you know, law enforcement, government, you know, even time, sometimes day jobs, there's more work than people. Um, but when we're doing our work, it's really important that uh, this, uh, the staffing that is necessary underneath the charter uh, is fulfilled. And we not all the way there yet. The fact that we have attorneys starting and case managers starting and, you know, new management makes me really happy. And it's really important that the public know that that is, that has begun and it is beginning. Um, and we have more that will be filling uh, later in the year. Also, in regards to our uh, our mission with the public input sessions, um, you know, once we get our once they are put up on the site, uh, really, I need everybody come to those if, if you're watching, uh, share those. Uh, this is a real opportunity to have input. Uh, when us. Uh, when we as a board vote on the final version of this that that we send to the city and, 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 to, the, and to the chief or to the you know city council the mayor and the chief uh we're not going to do that without we'll send that public input and putting our own ideas and we don't have all the answers uh so we want all parts of, of the city and people that are engaged in this work to attend these sessions or if you can't make a session you know call or email in a uh, suggestion uh, to this right to know um, policy, along with any other policy that we're working on, our policy team. We do a lot of good work, uh, but a big part of that work is making sure there's public input. And uh, we really ser are serious about that. Any note, any uh, comments, anything that you've said at a public meeting that you want to share, it, it'll come into us in a draft uh, in that report. So it's it's not going to go off in the ether and not be recognized by, by, our, by the board members or by uh, the staff that are, are doing this work. So please uh, share any ideas or thoughts you have about this and things that you want us to look at um, policy-wise. Any questions? Yeah. All right, uh, one thing that, you know, <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, yes, Mary. Well, one thing that stuck out to me, some of the biggest problems is that our family, children, and brothers, with a parent or parent, are being questioned outside of the police station. And I'm hoping there will be a connection regarding how children are to be treated. Because if there's one or more children or babies, or it's going to be caring for them, when the parent is being watching. And there was an incident last year or two years ago, and then I knew it was pepper spray. So I would very much appreciate a section regarding how children were with the parent or being, what are they going to do with them? You can't just set them on the curb and leave them. Thank you. Right. Uh, the last thing I'll, I'll talk about um, 
very briefly is just um, uh, I don't have an update, but I know I've got a lot of questions uh, and a lot of being like six or seven. That's a lot for police accountability when uh, you know regular people are asking me things that aren't necessarily in this room all the time about the court decision on, on regards to our um, disciplinary power. That still hasn't been decided yet. That's still um, going through the system of, of being uh, getting a trial, uh, a, a parent state. Uh, but there is, you know, the city does have a lawyer. There is a full uh, amount of justices now um, on that court in New York State that'll be hearing that. But there is an update. Is there an update for a date yet? But we are waiting very much to get that so there can be some clarity for all of us, um, or for our PD, for the city, for us in regards to our disciplinary power that we have in the charter that, that is under legal discussion right now. Um, the other court cases are getting a lot of attention today uh, that you know, I won't talk about, but for us, this is the major thing um, that, that we are still waiting for. So what we have done, and I, we talked about this before, is you know, currently we're reviewing cases with, um, which is the same as, as recommending discipline, but we are having our uh, panels to review cases right now. So that work is going on. But that um, process or the wording and the process of it could change if we get um, a decision on, on what this deployed power it would or wouldn't look like, what version of it that, that we have. So, just for people that are wondering, uh, as soon as there's a court date, it, it, hopefully there'll be a lot of media coverage of that. So, we've been, um, and we'll announce it also at a board meeting, but there hasn't been one as of yet. Yes, I, I did have a question, and I know at the last meeting, which I could not attend, you addressed the unscientific survey that was put out, and uh, what I'd like to know is uh, the city's response, and are we going to, uh, and I'm glad to hear that you're encouraging people to come out so that we get true, true insight as to uh, the role that we're playing and, and, and the work that we're doing, so are we going to do another survey that will be more balanced and really reflect the demographics of Rochester, or is that still up in the air? Well, yeah, the survey was was put together by by city council, and uh, I mean they've admitted publicly that it wasn't scientific, and you know that uh, as I mentioned last meeting, there was some things in the comments that were useful, and a lot that wasn't, um, and the demographics of the study weren't reflective of the population. Um, I think. I don't know how much a survey would determine if we're being effective or not, as opposed to us just engaging the community. Input, but yeah, I mean for input, um, I mean we don't have the we don't have it in our budget to do surveys. As like I, I would hate to use because kind of wanting to do a survey at council or the mayor um, decides to do a survey again in the future. We would just expect that to be scientific. That you know, there's a firm that's hired that takes uh, you know represent. Um, uh, part of the population that you know i've done surveys before like i worked for Eris when i was in college and survey take this you know, survey that be scientific and that was so there was a survey done in the future and city council had you know uh mentioned maybe looking at this again in a year you know when i would hope that the process that would be used would be something that was scientific my also my hope is the work that we would have done by then would also dictate you know the success of, of, of the work um that the staff is doing and the board is doing would dictate that people will see the success of this um, and the conversation that would have you know, policy changes, uh, recommendations, you know, non-recommendations on some things. Um, so, you know, if there's a survey in a year, it should be scientific, but hopefully our work can dictate a lot of that else. I would also hope that the city council would consult with us yeah. in coming up with, you know, that we could do this in a collaborative process or you know, either or. Um, the other thing that I've gotten questions about and I want to clarify is that we are reviewing and closing cases, that that work is happening. And I think that's very important for the community to realize that we are reviewing uh, cases and closing cases and uh, we have, you know, begun that work and it is on those. Oh, actually, can I say something? Oh, yeah. oh sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so quickly to the other thing in, in case folks don't know, and, you know, didn't watch every meeting, um, but the board did meet with the policy oversight team to come up with sort of the priorities for the coming year 
for the kinds of reports and research that they're doing. And I don't see any reason why those topics, which includes uh, treatment of minors. So I don't see why there's any reason that that also shouldn't be made public and they can put on the website those topics. So folks know what we're looking at. Oh. oh, I just wanted um, to know when we and for the public, when you say scientific, what exactly do you mean by scientific? Exactly. <laughs> I would say, first of all, it needs to reflect the community. <laughs> I mean, by the it word, needs to reflect the community that that we're serving and the demographics were totally off. And uh, if, and I, and basically the respondents were not representative of the Rochester population, number one. They didn't even look and, at that. Yeah. So that, I'm just saying, so that, does that make it scientific? That's, that's what I'm it wondering. Makes it unscientific. I mean, okay. if, if you're doing a survey of uh, a population, you're not gonna get the exact demographics of the population in the survey, but it should at least mirror it and be close to it. Um, and the questions also have to be asked in a way where you're not leading uh, the person being questioned to answer one way or the other. Um, and then also, well, there's, there's a lot of other things, but those are two really important things that you're doing surveys. Um, and also the way that the survey is done is really important. You can't just do email, you can't just do text. Um, you know, there's phone calls, but there is a way, there's, there's biases in what population to answer the survey, depending how it's given out. Um, and if it's a survey that people can self-select to answer, it also makes it less scientific because you can have populations that would just push to be included in the survey and others that don't. Thank you. And um, along with that, we do have staff members who are trained in putting together scientific survey and had council consulted us, it would have, their expertise would have been used to make sure that things were done in a more cohesive manner than before. Because we have a lot of trained staff in a lot of different areas and we need to utilize them as much as possible as we step forward and city council becomes much more cooperative with us than the past. We can't continue to live in the past. New day, new year, we're turning the calendar, we're flipping over, and it's going to be much better than previous year. Anything else in the chair's report before we move on? Great, that's uh, committee reports and a training committee. Uh, now that we have eight of our nine board members, I feel we can go into overdrive of getting uh, that going, um, especially with uh, many of our board members joining us you know, with this year, within the past few months. Um, it's, it's, and we just have one more for that, you know, that seat that you're going to be filled by the end of the month. So, yeah, I've had plenary conversations with staff, talked a little bit with uh, council, and we're going to be following up with, um, you know, the city human resources and, and uh, people that do the training for the city to make sure that we get uh, the staffing, uh, the, the staff already is set with the training that they need, but we as a board have a different set of standards of training that we need. We have some ideas what that looks like. Um, but really for our, 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 our new board members, the training, especially to get to the point where they can hear cases, there are certain trainings you have to go through, um, or some methods that you go through that we work with NAPO and, and other groups on, so we can have our newer board members go through some of the trainings that I've been able to go through with Arlene and George who've been here for a while. Um, we don't want to have anybody sit deciding on, and making decisions, potentially on cases without having gone through training. Um, this doesn't mean, you know, years of training, uh, but there is a certain amount of understanding of how to do this work correctly. So we're not putting anybody in a position of, of feeling uninformed in the ways to process decisions in regards to uh, um, our accountability work. So, uh, as you know, we're, we're back uh, doing one board meeting a month, um, just so we don't turn people out, but also so we can leave room um, for our trainings and, 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 and other events and, and hearing the cases. But I do anticipate, you know, by, the, um, by our next meeting, having a Fair report on, on what those changes will be and, and the schedules for that. Yes, yeah, so I just wanted to indicate I did attend the all day training last week. So, the uh, but my comment is the training really needs to be customized Wait. board members <laughs> because 50% of the materials that were presented didn't 
that didn't really apply to us or what we do here. It, more, it, it applied more to employees and what employees should be doing. So um, I, I was pleased. The other 50% was great. I mean, I was pleased that when I, the staff was great, but if they can kind of customize it for the, for the uh, Police Accountability Board and board members, that would be great. I hear that. Yes, and thank you so much for bringing that up. But I do want to remind the public as well as the board members, this is a work in progress. We are still building this. It's not as if we come in and to a board that has already been set up. So we'll be tweaking, changing, doing things differently as we see what works and what does not work. Because whatever we establish now, however we put it together, is something that we know that other board members and the community will have to live with 50 years from now. So we have to make sure that we do it very, very carefully. Some board members may have already been trained, know a lot, but we don't want to start out skipping a step, saying, oh, well, you know, I think you know this or not. Everybody's got to drink from the same fountain so that the information is the same for everyone. Anything else on training? All right, um, next paper search committee. Uh, we ask every day, Sherry's not going to stay on as our permanent executive director, but we have her as an intern through the uh, rest of the year. We are in the process of. Um, uh, may or may not the rest of the year. That yeah. I heard you slip that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 through some of the year, um, I guess, by the uh, Sherry's made a push of the plan on attending ACO. So, um, Hopefully we'll have somebody starting or about to start uh, at, at that point that will be our, our uh, permanent executive director. And I, I share giving us a lot of grace with your time. So I, I don't want to, us as a board or as a community to take advantage of, uh, of giving more than, uh, much more than, 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 than we have promised her and, and expected. Um, but there is a process, you know, a hiring firm that we're going through. Uh, there's wording on, on, on the, um, Job description that we're waiting to get approval still or bring your deck. Well, you have to, yeah, we have to do the RFP. Yeah. 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 Oh, yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's working on, I know there's counts, but we're in the position we have to wait to get your deck from or not. Well, the RFP, well, the position eventually, but right now the RFP process is right. So you want to say that. Want to do that. Well, just, uh, that's fine. Um, the subcommittee meeting this week, that's next week, within the week to, uh, draft the RFP, the proposal, so that we can hire an executive search team, uh, firm, whatever. And uh, I actually am challenged. Yeah, I don't know how sort of whether the job description needs further review from human resources before we include that as part of what we're going to give out. So do you, I don't know, do you know? I, I, I'll have to find out. Okay. I will have to find out. Okay. okay. That, that process is moving and we're going to have a firm right at Naples and also going to help. But I'm really looking forward to uh, uh, going through that process and, and, and getting somebody high quality uh, to help continue the work that we started here. But by the way, I know we've been talking about Nate Cole, but folks don't necessarily know what that stands for. <laughs> Well, there you go. <laughs> it's the National Association of Civilian Oversight and Law Enforcement, NACOL. It's an acronym. And um, it, it really is an organization that doesn't do oversight, but it sort of uh, is the place to go for getting information and training and those kinds of things. Um, and it's also um, a, a resource for doing outreach, gathering information, identifying. Um, Perhaps candidates who can come to be uh, in different positions all around the country. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I just want to say so when you say national, you have somebody outside of the state or outside of the city of Rochester. That's what they that's that's what the search is for. It's not tailored to New York State or the city of Rochester. We have yeah. I'm asking that question is a lot of times people have a lot of uh, head knowledge, a lot of statistical knowledge, 
but they don't really have the knowledge of the community where they're going to be working at. So that's just, you know, my suggestion. Can you kind of tailor it to, you know, make sure what who the oversight committee is, make sure that their person is caring about the community and not about their pockets. Right. So uh, the job description, which the draft, which we can, which you have a copy of, does talk about familiarity with Rochester specifically as part of the qualifications. <laughs> but the the national group is one. It's basically where all the different police accountability boards go to meet each other and learn, in a sense. That's what that national group is. Hey, anything else on the search term? Name, old business brands. Yes, Mary. This may be something for a speculative matter, but I missed this month of the township. I'm wondering if there's an update on the funding. Because the last step I remember there were discussions with the city council. Yeah. Yeah, we did. Uh, there was a budget pass. There wasn't uh, um, everything that we wanted, but there was uh, an understanding, I guess, maybe. Uh, uh, and there was what public side by a couple of different council members eventually after additional needs from um, from the staff, um, you know, through the interim deputy director for needs above what was passed in the budget. Those uh, and, and, the, and the need was, you know, shown that those positions would be filled. Uh, there was one position that was not actually budgeted that we needed budgeted that there was just a little discrepancy in getting um, put on that they did fill right away or did appropriate to get filled. So I took that as a, as a bit of council council uh, since that wasn't an initial budget to get that filled. And um, obviously the staffing model that uh, we have right now is not enough. Um, the staffing model that's that's in the charter is much, is much larger. I think the right number is somewhere in between what we have right now and what the charter says fully that we can have, that we, that we can work up to. But I, I'm I won't say optimistic, but I, I'm, I'm trusting right now that we can work um, through some conversations we've had since the budget has passed with council, um, council member Melinda and, and the new staff attorney for council uh, came over and there was some, you know, talk about metrics and things that we need to do uh, to show the staffing that is needed and other things I think, can, you know, leads to a little more productive productivity in our relationship and that might lead to additional positions. Anything for new business? Anybody still need to go to executive session? Yeah. All right, so we can make a motion to move to executive session to, to talk about um, positions, uh, uh, filling, and also potential uh, legal but potential uh, litigation. All in favor of that good session. I even second the motion. <laughs> right. Not anticipating any votes in that executive session. Uh, so I, I think when we do come back, we'll just be signing out. But if, if uh, you know, today you're welcome to, and not anticipating any votes coming out of the executive session. Mm -hmm. we'll All right. We're in executive session. <laughs>
Pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll have to get our horseshoe. All right, we are now back from the executive session. There were no votes taken, and we are going to end the meeting. So, all in favor of. I so move. All right. Sorry. No, no, that's my role. Going in. That's right. All right, all in favor of uh, in the all right. All right, all right, we are done. Thank you for watching. Ms. Wilson, uh, thank you for joining us. And uh, right. everybody, yay, welcome you along. Thank you, thank you. <laughs>